Uh, this is Peter O'Rourke with the NAPSIG Foundation. Uh, today's training session, virtual training session for February 26, 2015 is on effective routing techniques. Um, the trainer for today is Milton Ospina from uh, the company HERE, formerly known as NAVTEC. Um, and Milton has put together a hands-on online training tutorial um, that is available both on the NAPSIG website and then the data and the, and the content is available on NAPSIG's ArcGIS Online um, Center location. Um, with that uh, introduction, Milton, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Peter, and thanks, everyone. I, I think last time that we did uh, the previous webinar, which about a, was about a month ago, and it was on geocoding, uh, there was a lot of snow in the northeast, and I'm based in Denver, Colorado, and we had no snow for February, but we've done a lot of catch-up. We got about three feet of snow in the last 15 days in the Denver area, so uh, I can certainly commiserate with uh, a lot of you folks in the northeast. Um, yes, so this is the second in a, in a series of, of webinars. The person was in geocoding. This one is on routing. Uh, the materials for uh, this webinar are available on the NAPSIC website. Uh, and I'll, let me just show you briefly what those will look like. You basically will have access to a, a couple of folders. Uh, one is on geocoding exercise, and this is what we did a month ago. It has the content that you need in order to do geocoding as well as a script that you can follow along. Uh, this is what we're doing today is the routing exercise, which again has a script that you can use to follow along, and it ha also has a Excel file and that CSV format that we will use for geocoding. Um, let me show you what that script looks like. So I'm looking at the routing script, uh, and it, it's very detailed. It's, it's a step-by-step. -step. Uh, it talks about what the module are, what the knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, that are supported uh, in the module are. It talks about the knowledge that you will gain, particularly we will focus on routing and using the here map content available on RGIS online to do routing. There is a link for you to learn more about uh, what routing is and, and that sort of thing. Um, one of the things that uh, we will be covering is um, obviously we'll talk about the skills. you learn how to do some basic routing as well as a little more complex routing is what we call one-to-many routing operation. You learn how to use uh, the imagery available on RGS online, which is a real nice feature uh, in order to get a better understanding of the situational awareness. Uh, we will also use the here real-time traffic data that is also available in RGIS online to improve the quality of routing. Uh, and obviously, you learn how to do uh, a little more of a complex routing operation. Uh, we will be uh, using scenarios as part of the teaching process. So the first scenario that I'm going to cover is, is uh, we're going to assume but there is some type of disturbance. It doesn't matter what the disturbance is for the purpose of this training. And that disturbance is, is taking place at the village at Gulfstream, that's a shopping center. Uh, and that, we know that that particular shopping center is within the jurisdiction of the Pembroke Park West Park District Office. And somebody has requested that a vehicle be sent to that location. So uh, let's go ahead and, and move on to how to do that. The first step is to log in. Uh, this is the uh, NAPSIC uh, center or the NAPSIC dashboard, if you want to call it that way. Uh, it allows you to navigate to different parts of NAPSIC. Uh, the, the URL to that is in the document that you will be downloaded. But from there, you can go to the actual NAPSIC website. You can go to their education and training center. And obviously, you can log in into the RGIS online. I have already logged in. So you can see that it tells me I'm Milton, my, my login is Milton.Ospina underscore NAPSIC. I'm already logged in. So this is the, GIA, the NAPSIC Center. And from here, I can now have access to the capabilities of our GIS online through NAPSIC. Um, one of the first things that I will, you want to do is look at what content you have available. So if you notice here, there's a tab called My Content. And under my, my content, you see that we already have a map. So this particular exercise actually builds upon what we learned a month ago. So if you were to do this 
uh, starting out from scratch, I suggest that you do follow the geocoding module first so that you get to this particular map. Uh, so I already have a Broward County Sheriff and Fire Rescue Stations map, and what I can do is open that map in the RGIS Online Map Viewer. So there, there is the map. This is part of what we did last week. We focused a lot on, on a single single geocode to a, a batch geocode, and we ended up with two layers. One is the fire and rescue stations in Broward County, and the other one is the different sheriff offices all throughout Broward County. So this is the map that we're going to begin with. Um, and again, going back to the scenario, there's been uh, an incident or some type of disturbance at the village of Gulfstream Park. We know that it is in the Pembroke Park West Park District Office, so the first thing that I'm going to do is get to that location. Uh, to do that, there's many different ways to do that, but in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to type the address for that location, which is 3201. And notice that as I'm typing RGS online, it's giving me some options. So I'm going to select this one right here. That's what I want to be. And that's, that's my, the location of my police station. That's the district in which the incident was reported. Uh, one of the things that I like to do in terms of uh, situational awareness is I want to have as much data as possible so that I have all the essential information about a possible incident location to so make sure that we're doing the, we're making the best decisions with responding to, in this case, to a disturbance. So what I'm going to do is leverage the fact that we have world imagery available. And notice that when I turn on the world imagery layer, I, I get the imager, so I know, I know what, what around me in this case. Uh, when I turn on the imagery, it completely obscures the street data, the here street data on RGIS online. So what I can do is play with the imagery transparency. So if I click on the drop down arrow for the world imagery layer, I can select transparency and notice how I can use the slider bar to determine how much transparency I would like. I think I'm going to stay around 50% so I can see the images, but I can also see the street at this point, right? So we know, we know now that um, uh, this is the location. Now what I need to do is get directions to where that incident took place. So uh, from this location, I'm going to click on the Get Directions link. And notice what happened in the table of contents. So it changed dramatically. It gives me an A and a B, A being the from. This is the location from which I'm going to dispatch a police car or an EMS car or whatever that may be, and I need a B. So the B is where the incident or the disturbance was reported. In this case, it's at the village um, at Gulf Stream. And notice again, as I'm typing, it gives me an option, so I'm going to pick that one, and that's where the disturbance is. So. Uh, notice what happens, it created a route for me, it zoomed out so I can see from my special perspective how far I'm going. And notice that in this case, at this time of the day, it's telling me that it's going to take me about nine minutes to get there to cover about 3.08 miles. Okay, that is good in itself. I have a pretty straight shot to get to this particular shopping center, but I could improve the quality of the information at this point that I'm going to report back to a police officer or to an EMS vehicle. One of the options that RGIS Online gives you is the option to use traffic, real-time traffic. So uh, here, uh, our, my company offers uh, offers to ESRI or makes available to ESRI on RGIS Online the real-time traffic, historical traffic data, as well as predictive traffic. So. If, if you were a fleet company and you wanted to route trucks, uh, you could predict what the traffic will look like up to 12 hours out. In this case, I'm just going to look at the real-time traffic available, and I'm going to click Get Directions again, and a couple of things happen. Once you notice that the, now I can see through the transparency that uh, this particular highway is, is, is green, so it's free flow, some areas have 
uh, red, which means it's very slow, and some areas have yellow, which is meaning that the traffic has slowed down. And notice what happens. I went from same distance of nine minutes to same distance about 10 minutes. So uh, when I'm reporting back to the person that call or the, if the shopping center security department call, now I can say more uh, in a more assertive manner that we will be there in 10 minutes as opposed to nine minutes. So uh, from a public safety perspective, you're given a lot more accurate information. Um, so what, what did we learn up to this point? We learned how to do a, a simple route. We did a simple find of a location. This is the Pembroke um, district office. Then we uh, geocoded the location of the village center, and then we created a route. And then we improved that route with additional information by using the here traffic on RGIS online. So it gives us a much more uh, detailed information as to when we, that police car or that ambulance can be expected at the village. Um, all right, so uh, any questions at this point? This will be a natural break before we move into another type of routing. Peter, do you have any questions at this point uh, in the chat or anything? Uh, no, right now I think we're good, Milton. This is this is um, I think everyone's tracking. Okay, very good. So uh, let's move on to the second scenario. So let me go back to the script. This is what you will be downloading. And in scenario number two, we have Sheriff Scott and his his uh, web page. And as sheriff of Broward County, one of the things that he would like to do is get to know, obviously, all his uh, officers. And at some point, he would like to visit all these officers. In this case, we, the scenario is that he would like to visit all the officers to, to see what they look like, uh, meet the, his staff uh, firsthand, and, uh, and, 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 and have an understanding of what their equipment needs and requirements are. Um, so uh, here's the issue is it's just him. He will have one vehicle and he will have to figure out a way to visit a total of 16 district offices. Um, so it will potentially be a long day for him. So what I'm going to do at this point is uh, from the table of contents, I can click back to go back to my main table of contents. I can turn this off for now. I'm going to turn off the world imagery. I don't need that at this point. Uh, I do need to geocode the location from which, from which the sheriff is going to depart. So if you remember earlier, I show you, and this is the folder that you will be downloaded. I have an Excel file, which I already have opened. This is what it looks like. It's, in, it's formatted in uh, that CSV format. That's the format that our GIS online will recognize. And all I have in this particular file is, as, uh, is one record. And I need that record as a, as a geocode. I need to create an actual feature on the RGIS online map canvas from which to drive or generate routes from to visit the other offices. So what do I have in this file? I have um, the name of the location, we're going to call it the Office of the Sheriff, the name of the Sheriff. But the next four fields are critical. In order to geocode, at a minimum, I need to have an address, the city, a state, and a zip code. You can always just geocode to the zip code level, but that would just give you the centroid. So as much detail as you can get, that would be the better. I have another information that may come in handy for some other operations. So uh, now that I have a file that, that I can geocode with, I can now go back to my folder. I can literally click and drag that file and drop it onto the RGIS Online map canvas. And RGIS Online realizes, looks at the file, is very smart in terms of determining, okay, this is a, it is in the United States and it's an address, it's not a latitude and longitude. Um, Obviously, if you have from other countries, you, there's a lot of other options there, but in this case, we're still in the United States. On the left side, you see the fields that you saw on the, on the DAT CSV file, and notice how it knows that office location, in this case, that, that information, I don't need that for geocoding. But I matched, it matched city to city, state to state, et cetera, et cetera. So when you, when you plan to geocode an address, it's always nice to use the same uh, field names that our GIS online is going to be looking for. So we know that this is correct city to city, state to state, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to click add layer. So at this point, our GIS online is going to go ahead and find that location. 
and notice that if I click on it, it gives me the information that I have. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to do is that uh, I may change the symbol because it's a little small, so it will be hard to see. Notice that that layer is now available in the table of contents as the office of the sheriff. So what I'm going to do is, um, just because I know it will be small when I zoom out, I'm going to click on the drop-down arrow for the office of the sheriff address layer, and I'm going to change the symbol. And uh, I could change the symbol to something else, but I, I'm going to pick, maybe pick this one and just make it a little bigger so I can see it. All right, so that's a lot bigger here. Uh, let me go back to the table of contents. And what I like to do is zoom out so that I can see all the district offices. So from the Broward County Sheriff Office District layer, I click the drop-down arrow and select Zoom To, and now I see all the offices. Now, in this case, the sheriff is only interested in visiting the, the, um, the Broward County Sheriff offices. He's not interested in visiting the fire and rescue station. So I'm going to turn that off, that layer, to unclutter the Mac canvas. So what do I have right now? I have a from, which is where the sheriff is going to be departing from, and I have a two. The two are the 16 other offices that he's going to visit. All right, so this is what is called a one-to-many um, route uh, operation. How do I do? Act, how do I actually do this? So uh, what I need to do is set up some parameters so that RGIS Online knows how to use the the here map uh, content attributes to find the optimized route to visit all these offices. So from the Broward County Sheriff Office layer, I'm going to select the drop down and select Perform Analysis. So in RGIS Online, there's a, a number of great um, spatial analysis uh, capabilities that ESRI has moved from the desktop to also make them available on the online. Um, it gives me several options. So uh, in this case, I'm going to be using Proximity. And if I click on the Information button, it tells me what Proximity tools are available. So I, I can create buffers, I can create drive time areas, et cetera. For the purposes of this exercise, we will be primarily working on planning routes. So uh, notice that it says that the plan routes capability allows you to determine the best way to route a fleet of vehicles to visit many stops. In this case, I don't have a fleet, I just have one car, but I could potentially have many cars going to many different stops. A stop is a general term to basically uh, identify what is it that you're visiting. In this case, we're visiting uh, district offices from the uh, sheriff department, but it, they could be, uh, I could be a, um, a distributor of uh, fish and I need to visit all, a, a number of restaurants that provide seafood in my town. So uh, the, the place where I depart is the warehouse, the place that all the stops are the different restaurants where I need to deliver fish to. So you, you understand w uh, what that means. So let's go ahead and close that, select the use proximity, and again, so it gives me the plan routes, it gives me another information pop-up box and it has a little more information. So again, it's, 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 it's many different use cases that you can be uh, using in this case to plan uh, routes. And again, we're doing a, a, a one-to-many route, but you could have many cards going to many different locations. So let me select plan routes. And what you see here is the table of contents is, has dramatically changed. It needs a number of parameters based on what my needs are, or the needs in this case of the sheriff, so that he can properly find the optimized route. Um, uh, the first option here is, uh, how am I going to travel uh, to visit all these locations? And in this case, I will have um, uh, a number of options. I, I, I can drive, I can be driving a truck, or I can be walking. Um, a truck is if you if you really manage in a, a truck fleet, you, you have a number of other parameters you can leverage from the here trucks um, attributes available through the here map content on RGIS online. So let's stick with driving. I'm driving, he's driving his car. The, where will the route begin? So the route begin at the office of the sheriff address, which is what we geocoded using that Excel file. Um, let's assume that it is today. 
And let's say that he's going to start at 8 o'clock in the morning. This is East Coast time. And, and that's an important um, point to make because he's, this is an East Coast. I'm in the mountain time, and you'll see that's going to come back in a little bit. So he's going to start at 8 o'clock in the morning. He's going to come back to the place that he started from. How many vehicles am I routing? In this case, only his car. And how many stops do I have? In this case, I have 16 offices that he will be visiting. Um, let's assume that he will spend at least 30 minutes at each location. Um, and um, we're going to give him a little freedom because, you know, you go and maybe you haven't met one new officer or they have uh, a side meeting that we'd like to have. But at a minimum, let's plan that he will spend at least 30 minutes. We do not want to limit uh, how much time he's going to be there because, again, he might be expending more time in, a, in an office and maybe less time in other offices. So let's let's remove that uh, that particular parameter. And uh, number eight is basically what the name of the layer will be. You can give it any name you want. I'm just going to let RGS Online pick a default name for me. And I'm going to save the results in my folder in my subscription, my NAPSIS subscription. Um, notice also that I can use the current map, the current map extent. That's why I zoomed out to in order to see all the district offices. And what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and click on Run Analysis. So it's going to run the analysis, and it gave me an error. And I wanted this error because it's an error that you probably ran into. Basically, what it's telling me is that that layer already exists. Uh, so when I was uh, practicing to do this webinar last night, I created this layer. But I decided to keep it there because chances are you're going to do the same thing that I just did. So basically, in this case, you either had to remove that layer or you basically like give it another name. So what I'm going to do is go to the very end, and I'm going to add number one because maybe I'd be testing different parameters and run uh, analysis again, and he took it. Uh, and this process is going to run for about 40 seconds or so. So what's going to happen in the next 40 seconds or so? Um, RGS Online knows the parameter. He knows the from, that's the sheriff's office. He knows the to, that's the 16 uh, sheriff district offices that he will be visiting. We set up some parameters, uh, uh, 30 minutes at least, uh, per office, but we're not going to constrain him to just that. Uh, and at this point, RGIS Online is looking at the here map content in RGIS Online, looking at the attributes, determining which ones are highway, which ones are city streets, which ones are boulevards, and try, uh, what the speed limits are, and trying to determine the best or the uh, optimized route for the sheriff to visit all of those, and hopefully he can do that. Um, in, in one day or so. Uh, once the process is completed, RGIS Online is going to come back and actually create two layers, which, which it just did. I'm going to wait a couple of seconds in case that is a delayed. Uh, but in this case, the process just ended, and it, it tells me where you start from. If you notice carefully, it says 18 right there. That's because it's counting where you started from and where you're going back to. So it basically repeats the first location twice. Um, and I have two new layers. Uh, one is the actual route, and the other one is the stops. The stops are the district offices. Uh, what I like to do now is pick the layer for the route and click on the drop-down arrow for that layer and show table. And this is nice because, let me just bring it up a little bit. All I have is route, is route number one. The total count is started with 16, uh, although even though it says 18 there, that's because it goes back to the location. It tells me that the total minutes for this particular route is 688 minutes. Service time means this is the time that the sheriff will be spending at each district office, the total of that time. And the travel time will be 208 minutes. He'll be driving about 118 miles. Uh, notice that it says 6 a.m. That's because I'm based in, in my mountain mountainside, but it's actually this is East Coast time. So, uh, so he basically started at 8 o'clock and went until about 7.28. So he probably drove roughly, uh, 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 sorry, uh, roughly 12 hours or so. 
Uh, so that's the information for the route. I can also, at this point, go back to the, my table of contents and look at the assigned stops layer, which was also created. Those are these circles right here. Click at the drop down arrow for that layer. Open the show table. And what it will do at this point is give me a detail report for each one of them. So where he's from, how much time he spent on each one of them, how many miles he drove, how many miles from the previous one, et cetera, et cetera, and what time he departed and what time he finished. So again, this is, uh, this is one particular route. I can always go back. If I'm not comfortable with this, he's going to be there for 12 hours or so. I may want to go back and modify my route instead of 30 minutes. I may want to make it uh, 20 minutes. Or I, or I may decide that on day one, on today's Thursday, I'm only going to visit eight of them. So I create a route for eight, those eight. And then I can create another route, give it another name. And I'm going to do that tomorrow and plan accordingly. So RGS Online gives you a number. It's, it's very flexible in, sense that, in terms of the things that you can do to plan this type of route operations. In this case, the scenario is the sheriff wants to uh, meet the officers. He, he likes to hear uh, if there are any complaints or any issues, and in this case, what their uh, equipment requirements are. Uh, and we create a route that he can then um, make a determination as to, do I follow it? Do I split it into two days? What is it that I want to do? And you can then manipulate our GIS online to come up the best option based on the time available. Um, so what do we learn under scenario number two? And in scenario number two, we learned that uh, to do a one-to-many in this case, we need a from location, that's the office of the sheriff. We need a two location, those are the 16 offices. And you need to tell our GIS online how to use the here map content based on parameters. Uh, what day, what, what starting time you're going to do, how much time are you going to be spending at, at what location? Do you want to limit it all to eight hours, 10 hours, 11 hours, or do you just want to leave it open to give the sheriff all the freedom that he needs to visit all the offices? And finally, you execute the operation and you end up with two layers. One is the actual route layer, and one is the uh, stops layer with the, uh, a lot of detailed information about the different stops. Um, and that's basically the bulk of what we're covering today. Um, I'd like to hand it over back to Peter to see if there are any questions, and this will be a good time for you to uh, type your questions in the chat or send them in to, uh, to Peter so that we can answer them. Hey, thanks, Milton. This is great. Um, very useful. Uh, first question is, um, is the HERE data available through all AGOL accounts, or are there certain restrictions on who gets what data? And I don't know if you know no. the answer. Yeah, no, the, the, let me open a, a PowerPoint that we used last time, if that's okay. And great. let me uh, share this particular slide. So uh, we provide the, the here map content is available all throughout the, the ARC, uh, ESRI platform. So it's available in RGIS online. It's the same map that you will be seeing in RGIS for transportation analytics or in business analysts or business analysts online, and obviously in the stream map premium. So it, it is basically the same content, which is the same content that you will also find. If I look at the stream map premium, uh, ESRI has um, uh, different flavors of by region, North America, Latin America, Australia, et cetera. Um, in all of those, you will find the same here map content. In the case of the street map premium, you, you get the streets with the points of interest, administrative boundaries, you get traffic patterns, trucks, which is if, you, if, you, if you're driving a fleet of trucks, there are different uh, legal and physical restrictions that you take into account. And obviously, the locators are built on our map. Uh, here's the RGIS online. So the here map content available on RGIS online is the street, our street data, our administrative boundaries, our traffic product, which includes the traffic patterns, which is basically historic, an average of historical traffic information for the last three years on 15-minute interval. So if you'd like to uh, see what the traffic is going to be like uh, instead of today, a week from today, when, you, when you're on RGIS online, instead of putting today's date, you can put next week's date. In that case, instead of using real-time traffic, it will be using historical traffic data. 
to come up with a, a route. Uh, Real-time traffic, predicted traffic, is, again, this is projecting uh, 12 hours out. Uh, RG, uh, ESRI also licenses the HIA pedestrian content, so if the sheriff wasn't driving, he was walking, and let's say this is our community policing, and you're going to create a route to visit different neighborhoods and you're walking, um, that might be, uh, you might be, be using the pedestrian routing option. Uh, so that's something for you guys to keep in mind, and obviously the locators are also built in our content. Uh, and finally, for all the business solutions, if you're doing any type of demographic analysis as part of your community policing, um, uh, we provide also the geographical data for that, not the attribute data, but the, the geographical data. So the, the, the answer is, is yes, it's basically the same content that you use. And every, every time you buy our GIS online subscription, um, you have the option to pick the, the, the base map, which is the street space map that's primarily uh, here map content. So sorry, kind of a long answer, but uh, uh, I just wanted to give you as much detail as possible. No, that's, that's actually really help, helpful. Um, refresher for those who were on the, the last month's uh, training and for those who didn't make it, that's really useful. Thanks, Milton. Um, another kind of uh, uh, really more of an Esri question, but maybe you have some um, insight into it is, and, and I think I have the answer really to it, is how much does it cost to do routing with ArcGIS Online? Um, I, I, and the question is, I don't think it's free. And I think right. the, the answer I will give you is you need an ArcGIS Online license or subscription. Um, you can get a, I think it's a 90-day or something or 30-day free subscription to try. Um, and, it, and if you have a particular project and you want to experiment with it and get a bunch of agencies together, you can reach out to NAPSIG and we do get a, have a certain number of seats that we have available. Um, that we can give you for free for a limited period of time to develop a project. Um, and if you need some training, we can talk to you about that. Um, but I don't know, Milton, if you have more you want to add to yeah. that. Yeah, no, that, that, that is indeed the answer. Uh, RGS Online does have an online uh, credit calculator. Uh, so if you go to the RGIS.com, under there, I think under pricing, uh, there's a link to the uh, calculator. So it's a very nifty calculator that you like to use. Uh, but but even here, if you remember when I went to the Broward County uh, count, uh, shirt office layer and I went to perform an analysis, I'm just going to repeat part of it. I'm not going to redo it. I go to plan routes. Um, I said I was driving. I was starting from the office of the sheriff. Um, and it's one vehicle, and then I said 16 stops. Um, I said it was 30 minutes. Uh, I'm not going to run this, but what I like to show you is that uh, if you notice here, it, it, it has an option called show credit. So if I click on show credit, it tells you how many credits you're consuming. So for this route, it basically needs to have the parameters before it can estimate what the credits are. So in this case, for this route, you consume in one credit. So that's always a really uh, good, good uh, tool to use. Um, so you've got two options, obviously, use the credit calculator on the RGIS.com. Uh, I think the option that uh, PETA put forward, particularly for public safety organizations that are members of NAPSIC, you should definitely take advantage of that. Yeah, and, and I think just a note on the credit issue, I know in the past people would burn through these credits like there's no tomorrow, and it was a real issue. It was kind of like the toner for buying your printer. Um, <laughs> I know for the past uh, at least a couple of years now, I, I don't even pay attention as much as I used to to our credit burn because it, it, Esri's just re changed the way they do that and it's no longer an issue. So um, our experience to date has been the credits really aren't, aren't as big of a problem as it was in the past. Um, another question, Milton, um, and, and again, we have the answer to this, and maybe we can walk folks through this. Um, is the data that you've shown today available? And I know I can see right there, um, uh, you have our website up, I believe, uh, on an earlier tab. If we could show yes. them quickly. Oh, that's not, I'm sorry. If you just go, oh, there you go to the, um, actually go to the carrot, click the carrot. Okay. Uh, yep. Okay, and so if you just go to napsigfoundation.org, you'll see this, but they'll go down a little bit, about halfway through, and you'll see training tutorials. Um, see that middle tab? Oh, go up a bit. Training tutorials. Uh, 
Yep, okay. And then with that, you'll see the actual tutorials, both last week, last month's geocoding and this week's um, routing uh, one. You'll, you'll see both the document as well as the sample data set. That's uh, correct. So, that's so when, you when you download this, you want to put them into a folder like I showed you earlier, right? So in this case, I have a folder called NAPSIG. And uh, under that, you get, um, in the first exercise, we actually had uh, the pictures of all the different fire stations. That was part of the, a challenge step in the exercise. You get the geocoding exercise. You get the files to do the geocoding. You get the script. And what, we, what we're doing today, which is the script, and uh, again, in the file for the geocoding. So, Great. yeah, you, those are downloadable from here. Okay, and we have a couple uh, questions uh, more. Um, one question is, and these are a little bit more kind of technical questions, how can we build in rules for directions that are different since emergency vehicles don't have to follow most traffic regulations? Um, I'm, I'm assuming that means, you know, going the wrong way in a one-way street and things yeah. like that. I know that's not the preferred, um, you know, way to do routing. So, but that was one question. Yeah, so let me see. So in this case, I had driving, right? But uh, if I use trucking, uh, it will, it will, it will ask at some point. It's going to force me to specify different parameters. Uh, what you see here is what you get in terms of out of the box, so to speak, right? So uh, if you're using RGS online the way you're looking at it right now, you're limited to to uh, to what you get. But obviously, there is RGS online APIs, and at that point, you're probably moving more into a little bit of customization. So you probably want to become familiar with the RGS online APIs, uh, and, and, and ESRI does provide quite a bit of uh, details in, in terms of sample code and things like that. Uh, but yeah, it is RGS online. It is customizable from that perspective. Uh, it's not something that I can just show you here, but if you're moving into specific customization, moving out of the box type of functionality, you'd be using the APIs for that, which are indeed very flexible. Yeah. Um, next question is, is when you ran the analysis, um, did the a analysis actually optimize the route or did it just take uh, the stops in order? Um, well, it you, is a, yeah. Yeah. No, it actually, it's interesting because if you notice, um, I'm going to close this if I zoom in. Uh, it, it actually it did. It, it's an optimization route in this case. It's trying to find the optimal location to to visit all of them. Uh, it, it does. Um, there is no order because the the district offices were not number, right? So if I go back to my district offices right here, and I open the table, they you know they don't have you know they do have a feature ID number, but I don't have them a specific number to say go here first, go there second, that sort of thing. So it is in fact optimizing the route based on the parameters that we provided. It is definitely, and when, and this is a, like I said, this is not a complex route because we're doing one to many, but if you had many to many, in other words, let's say that the sheriff uh, gets one of his assistants and say, hey, um, you go visit half and I go visit the other half, you're definitely going into the optimization mode there. Great. Thank it's a much more complex route. Great. Um... I think that's what we have right now uh, in terms of questions. We'll give it a couple more seconds for people to send anything additional in. We do have some folks who are a little bit concerned about they were unable to connect to the audio. Um, if okay. you're hearing this, you were able to connect to the audio. Um, a lot of people, though, were able to connect to the audio, so I'm not sure there might have been a WebEx issue that was a regional thing. Um, but as a reminder to everyone, we will post this um, training on our website a little bit later on, either today or tomorrow morning, so you'll be able to download this um, full WebEx tomorrow, uh, and you can go through it at your leisure. And if you do have questions, um, if you do have questions um, after that, feel free to reach out to me. Um, we can, um, you know, use some of Milton's time to um, answer those questions. We do have two more that just popped in, Milton, if we have okay. a little more time. Sure. Uh, what, what is the confidence level of the HERE data? <laughs> confidence level of HERE data. Uh, that, that's a great question, uh, um, and I never – somebody referred to it uh, 
in, in statistical terms. Uh, we, we uh, a little bit of information about here. So we've been around, uh, basically this will be our 30th, 30th year. Uh, we've been building map content uh, for that amount of time. That's our primary uh, capability. We were the first to develop uh, maps for in vehicle navigation systems. In fact, we're probably better known for uh, the here maps available in, 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 in personal navigation devices like Garmin's, but also in vehicle navigation uh, systems. So four out of five cars out there that have an in vehicle navigation systems are using the here map content. Um, at that point, Particular industry is very demanding in terms of quality, quality of the uh, of the street data, quality of the attributes for the routing, quality of traffic, quality of the points of interest. Um, uh, we are constantly updating our map. Uh, we have a, a fleet of hundreds of cars that are actually driving the roads. Uh, we're probably the only last company, large mapping company that continues to drive the roads. And we're always con uh, crea uh, being creative and innovation. Let me minimize the screen and show you. Um, this is, uh, you probably see some of these cars. You see, a, I hope you see a blue car. These are the cars that are now driving with our mobile LiDAR. Uh, which allows us to capture billions of, 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 of points of data um, that will allow us to increase the accuracy of our maps. It also captures video and uh, panoramic imagery. Uh, so this is the kind, we then take this content, we bring it into our uh, processing centers and we actually use it to improve the quality of our maps because it gives us very accurate measurements on the number of lanes, the width of each lane, the bridge heights, which is really critical for uh, transportation industry to make sure that those trucks don't hit the bridges and so on. So um, I don't have, uh, statistically speaking, I don't have a confidence level like a 95, 96, 97, 90 I. It's very accurate. We also have a very uh, active um, relationship with many uh, fleet companies and uh, users of our data that are always giving us feedback. Esri, for example, uses our data through other platform, and we're constantly getting feedback from them where somebody says, hey, the name of the street change or the traffic light move or whatever that may be. So we have a very active not only that community with, with our customers, but also a large uh, citizen community that also provide uh, feedback to us. We, we do strive to be the best map up there. I'm not going to tell you it's perfect. Things do change, and uh, there are errors here and there, but we strive to fix those as soon as possible. Yeah, thanks, Milton. And I guess um, from, from one standpoint of um, – uh, folks who may not be familiar with HERE as the company, you might be familiar with NAVTEC, which actually is what HERE used to be. Um, and, and I'm pretty sure Milton isn't the one who decided to change that name and, and no, create some no. <laughs> uh, Yeah, so a lot of people might just be confused about what the company actually is. Um, okay. the, the other question then is, uh, can I do a many-to-one routing uh, routing to see which emergency service location is the closest to an incident. Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, because it gives you an option. It gives you an option to determine uh, how many vehicles are going and um, um, how many. Uh, you're starting for in that case, you might be saying uh, you're starting. You're visiting uh, starting with three vehicles, and the destination is just one stop. So yeah, you can do that as well. And and the other thing that you might want to do is also explore. Um, uh, it's also explore, let me just, I was going to say, let me go to my content here. I want to bring my table of contents back. Um, the, uh, uh, you may, you may want to, uh, you may also want to do something, uh, look at the other type of analysis capability. So if I go to the layer here, perform analysis, if I go to proximity, notice that there are other options. You can find the nearest also connect origins to destination. So look through some of these other options out there that will also, it may not be precisely what you need, but it might give you some other ideas of things you can do. But for your particular questions, yeah, you can specify that you're starting out with three and the destination is just one. Yeah, that's great. Um, and another question then, Milton, is uh, can the traffic data be integrated with local street centerline data from ARC desktop um, and network analyst? Uh, right now, on the desktop level, uh, if I go back to the presentation, um, 
and let me go back to stream up premium. Uh, right now, the only uh, traffic available to stream up premium is the historical traffic data, not the real time traffic data. Um, uh, technically speaking, you could um, bring the real time traffic to the desktop, uh, and we are exploring some of those things with S3. Um, it, it, it can be a little complicated, but right now, as of today, no, the answer is the only traffic that you can bring to the desktop at this point through StreetMap Premium is the historical traffic data. Great, thanks. But, but if that's something, a use case that you need, I, I will really strong that, uh, strongly recommend you reach out to S3 and talk to them. Uh, about that. I think they need to hear that that's something that a lot of folks out there need. Yeah, yeah, I, that, that's a good point. Um, and then another question about here, um, just in terms of your data collection processes, uh, from what sources are address points obtained for the here data? And how, fr what's your frequency of collecting that and updating it? Well, thank you for that question. That's a very good question. So we, right now, we today we use over 80,000 diff, 80, different sources. So in many cases, um, let's say uh, uh, let's say that I go to a, a country where I never we never collected data before, uh, and I'm just going to make this up. Let's say Nigeria, and we never collected data. One of the first things we want to do is talk to the government, all the different urban. Or, uh, planning departments try to get, or the Department of Transportation try to get whatever data is available and try to source that data. And, and from sourcing that data, we can actually do the validation, which means we actually bring the vehicles, we drive the roads so that we can validate that those roads are where they're supposed to be. And then as part of that process, we do the value add. The value add is that we, we generate the center line, we, we get the number of lanes, we get the traffic signs, we get um, the POIs, the speed limits, uh, are there any legal or physical restrictions for trucks and so on. So uh, right now, today, we, we do tell the story that we use over 80,000 different, 80, different sources. Uh, but even in, in developed countries like in the United States or Western Europe and developed in terms of the map content being quite developed, we still do drive the roads. We, we do analysis to determine what areas with areas are experiencing a lot of a lot of growth, and where we we do um, uh, focus on those areas because there are new neighborhoods, new streets, new shopping centers. So we are always constantly um, being in touch at the local level. Uh, for example, our company has about uh, 6,000 employees. I work out of the Denver office, and in Colorado there are dozens of us that I don't even know who they are, but they, a lot of these guys basically own their own little piece of the map. They're in touch constantly at the local level. In many cases, when they open a new highway ramp or a new intersection, we're the first to drive it so that we can capture all that information and make it available on the map. So uh, it, it, um, it's not just taking somebody else's map or a paper map, we do use those sources, but then we validate them, uh, we verify the data, we do the value add with additional attributes and additional information. We actually use a lot of the probe data to verify that uh, that information is correct, and obviously we use our vehicles that I showed you a few minutes ago to improve the quality of the data. Yeah, and, and for those folks who are interested in, in some of the data sets that HERE offers, um, that data is available to uh, state-level agencies um, at no cost through the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency's HSIP, H-S-I-P, HSIP Gold Program. There's a state release. Um, some of that data, NGA has not updated that data recently, but I think they're about to. Um, but you can still get some relatively fresh data from them at no cost um, if you reach out to HSIP. Um, and if you have any questions on how to do that, just, just zap me an email and I can let you know how to do that. Um, so I think that's it, Milton, and I want to thank you very much. We're going to um, close the recording here um, just now, uh, but I want to thank you very much for all the time uh, you've put into these trainings. Um, it 